Hi Facebook, Steve Woody here, Online Mastery, and this is episode number 15. Um, been nearly three weeks now of doing this, so thanks for staying with me, I appreciate it. Today I'm going to be talking about content strategy, and in case you can't tell, it's a bit of a different location. So, um, just to give you some context of where I am, I'm sat on a train station at the moment. And so the reason I'm here and doing my midday mastery is because I had a choice. I could have put this off and I could have decided to do it later, or I could have said, you know what, published is better than perfect, and just getting it out there actually makes a difference, and the fact that I'm doing this, regardless of where I am, regardless of whether I've got the perfect audio, regardless of if I've got the right location, regardless if the Wi-Fi is strong enough, I'm just going to do it. Because I believe that getting your message out there is important, and if I've learned anything in the last three weeks, it's that content really, really matters. For example, my Facebook subscribers have gone from 700 to almost 1,100 since I started doing this. They are people who I don't know. I have about three or 400 new people. I have people purchasing my products and services who I don't know. I had somebody who bought all of my digital products, never, never spoke to them before, and that is because of these midday mastery sessions. So this works. This is proof that it works. And so... I really want to talk about content and I want to go through the strategy of content, some things that I do um, that you can maybe use, adapt in your own business, but also just some things to consider. And I'm going to make this quite short, although to be fair I've got 30 minutes. I got off the train purposefully so I can talk to you guys today because if I, was, if I stayed on the train um, the signal was in and out. And you guys are important to me. I want you to be able to get this. I want to be able to do this for you. So I'm more than happy to be able to take that um, time out to do this. So I've got 30 minutes to my next train. So with that being said, I'll answer any questions that you guys have got. Um, but I've made some notes. I'm literally sitting here with my laptop look, just looking at my notes because I'm trying to structure this a little bit. First thing I'd say is the most important thing about content when you're doing your content is to repurpose it. You need to make sure you repurpose your content. And so... For you to be able to do that, you need to consider that your, your content will always be better if you're repurposing it as a video. Um, if you have somebody who has written something to you, then it will always be written. If you have somebody who has given you a video testimonial, or if you have video content, then you can always repurpose that as still images from the video. You can always repurpose that as audio from the video. You can always repurpose that as written text of the video. And so, in terms of your content strategy, video should always be your highest, um, your highest regard in terms of the content that you provide or you put out there, because you can repurpose it in many, many different ways. You can record a video and upload it to YouTube. You can then go onto a service called Rev.com, and on Rev.com you can get that video transcribed, and you can upload the transcription in the description of YouTube. You can also use that as a blog post. You can upload the video to your blog with the description. So in case of doing a five minute video, you've now got multiple different um, resources that you can, you can utilize and use. Another thing to consider is social media posts. You could take still images from that video. Uh, you could use that as, as Facebook images with some, um, just a snapshot of what you've written. And so there's lots of different things that you can do and lots of ways you can do it. So, and, and that's, that's a good example of this, for example. So every time I do a Facebook Live, um, I found this to be a really, really good way for me to deliver content. And so as a result, what I'm doing is I'm taking a Facebook Live and I'm uploading it directly to YouTube. Now, what I will be doing is taking a scrap transcript of all of this, cutting out all of the waffle, obviously, because we all know that I like to talk a little bit too much sometimes. But I'm going to be using that to get all of the important information and I'll be looking over the analytics, I'll be looking over the viewers. You know, some of these Facebook Lives have had almost, well, one of them now, the first one I did has had over 2,000 views. So obviously that was a poignant subject, that was something that people wanted to talk about. So as a result, what I'll do is I'll take that, I'll probably create some sort of a, a downloadable PDF as a result of that. Hi there. Sorry, where are you travelling to? Uh, I'll be travelling down to Pitsy. Pitsy? Yeah. Sorry guys, just give me a second, I've got some people here. I'm just on a call. Is that all right? Yeah, it's all right, but the last train, you didn't get on it, that's why we were... No, I got, I got off it because of the Wi-Fi. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. No, no, you're all right. No worries. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm just on a call. That was on. I didn't want the, uh, the train. Obviously, it would have been uh, disruptive to everyone if I was uh, in and out of signal. So I thought I'd get off and do the call, but thanks for checking. It's live, right? Anything can happen. So, guys, um, where was I? Sorry, that was... Um, 
C to C checking up and finding out why I got off the train and I've just decided to sit here. Obviously, look like a criminal. Um, yeah, going back to what I was saying now, um, content, right? Published is better than perfect. This is definitely not my most perfect video that I've ever made, but it doesn't matter because the idea is I'm getting the content out there. And I think that what I found with a lot of people that I've spoken to is that there's been a. I, I've seen this a lot lately where there's been a a real um, conflict with people where they want to upload content but they're they're scared they, they've got this fear of being judged they've got this fear of um, being ridiculed they've got this fear of um, it not being valuable and so I, I mean I, I have it at times you know I mean I could be looking um, at this video now and saying oh my god this isn't a great video should I leave it up oh my god should I post this should I say this and the reality is that you'll get your best engagement in content when it's controversial. It's just the reality of how it is, especially if you're posting on social media. A debate by polarizing two different audiences, by having two different um, types of people that are for or against, that will get your biggest engagement when people start to argue. I publish content daily to my Facebook group, right, exactly. So you see, this is fantastic because publishing content daily to your Facebook group is a really good way of interacting with your Facebook group. What I, would, what I would question in terms of content is obviously there's, there's two types of content in my opinion. There's the valuable content that you're adding to your customers. So there's the valuable content that you're adding to your customers. But there is also going to be the content that you're adding to your subscribers. Uh, or to your, you know, the people that are not subscribers that you want to become subscribers. So I would basically say it's free and paid traffic. It depends on who you're actually targeting. Because the... The reality of this is, is when you're actually putting the content out there, you, you want to be getting something back for it. If you're, if you're doing it, I mean, people say they put content out for free and, oh, I'm doing this as a way of giving back. Or I'm, I mean, we, we all put content out for a reason. Either we have an opinion that we think is valuable and we want to share that with other people. Therefore, we want to add value to other people by educating, inspiring, motivating, whatever that is. Or we want to attract new people to us and we're putting content out in a way that we hope to attract new people. So we either want to attract people to us or add value to the people who are already with us. You see, and the purpose of me doing these Facebook Lives is twofold. I want to attract new people to me and at the same time, I want to add value to the people who are already here. You know, like the guys, you guys that are tuning in every day. So yeah, absolutely, if you want to build authority but also to build presence. Two things that you can do with your content. The other thing I'd say is you need to know your channels. Where are you publishing your content? If, you, if you're on social media and you're just publishing content for the sake of publishing content and you're not actually interacting with your audience, then you kind of it defies the logic of what social media is all about. If you post content and you need to check in on that content, you need to find out if anyone's um, responded to that content, if anyone's interacting with that content, and if so, you need to engage with them. You know, I'm not saying that you should engage instantly. Sometimes it's good to delay the response. Um, something that Jamie once taught me, which was, you know, a very valuable lesson. I'm not going to say I follow it, but it was definitely a valuable lesson, is to wait 24 hours before I respond to anything. And that way I won't be acting so much out of emotion, but more out of logic. You know, it's always better to sleep on a, a reply, especially if you're considering a reply that, you know, is, is a very detailed one or something that can have a massive impact on people. You know, I try not to... Um, I try to keep things quite light-hearted on social media. I try and do things, um, you know, quite satire and flippant. Um, but at the same time, if I'm making a business decision on somebody else's business, like if I'm talking to a client and I have an important decision to make around their business, I'm not just going to jump straight into that. I want to take some time to consider that I'm actually giving them the best advice I can. I want to do some research. I want to make sure that that advice I'm giving them is, is good advice. And so sometimes, you know, replying to content and interacting is good, but sometimes you can delay that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I've already mentioned that published is better than perfect. Just get your stuff out there. That's the most important thing. But something else I'd say about your content that a lot of people don't consider is to make sure that your content has a call to action. You know, if you're putting your content out there purely just to um, add value and just to, um, to connect with people, that's great. But if you're doing it to build a list, to, to subscribe, to get people interested to you, to add value, then you need to know, or you need to ask yourself the question, what's next? You know, what do you want next for that person? So if I'm doing this, the next logical step will be for me, I'm not going to do it today because, you know, it's do as I say, not do as I do. But it's a good lesson, right? Um, what, what I would do here in an ideal situation, if I wanted to make some sales or I wanted to make some money out of this or I wanted to continue the nurture sequence, is I would have a link 
to a blog post or to a landing page that would talk about content marketing strategies or, you know, that I, I would do an opt-in maybe, you know, the top three things that you need to know to, um, or, or the top ten things or the top seven things or the, the one thing that will make a massive difference to your content, like whatever it may be, there could be an opt-in there or it could just be another video or it could be a blog post. There's so many things I could do as a call to action where I send people from this Facebook Live uh, to continue the story, to continue the journey, because so many people will want to know, okay, so you've told me all this strategy, now how do I implement it, how do I, how do I use it, how do I adopt it, what do I do? And so it's, re it's worth considering when you're doing your content how you're going to be taking people to the next step. Now I'm just looking in my bag and the reason I'm doing this is because I need to get my charger out because Facebook Live has decided it's going to absolutely drain my battery and before this turns off, I want to see if I can plug it in before the beautiful people at C2C come and decide to tell me off again for sitting here uh, doing my Facebook Live. Uh, just give me a second, guys, and I'll plug this in. So, going back to published is better than perfect, right? And that is exactly why I wanted to do this today and do it like I did. And also, here's another thing. I was going to do a different um, uh, strategy today. So nobody actually reached out and said what they wanted me to cover. So I was sitting there deliberate, or sort of just contemplating, what do I actually want to talk about today? You know, what's important? And what I was going to talk about was uh, what to do when you have no idea about what to do. Like I was sitting there going, I need to, I need to deliver content. I said I'm going to do it on strategy. What else do I talk about? Like, what else can I go over that's going to be valuable, that's going to add massive value? And I'm sitting there racking my brains thinking, I've covered everything that I need to cover. Everyone knows what they need to know. Like, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit for Monday. I want to get into the sales funnels. I want to get into the whiteboard and, and mapping stuff out for people. That's what I'm looking forward to. But this is like, it was something that was important. So I was going to talk today about what to do when you have no idea about what to do. Like when your mind's drawing a blank, what do you do? Sometimes you just pick up the phone, you just tap record and you just go for it. Sometimes you just you know, meditate, you take some time out, you, you, you go for a walk, you do something different. Like, you know, yesterday I had a challenging day, I went to the gym, I had some amazing clarity while I was there. And it wasn't until I actually thought while I was on the train that I, I completely changed it. I thought, you know what, I want to do this Facebook Live, but I'm on the train, it's really awkward, um, it's not how I want to be, I'm not at the studio, I need to travel today, should I travel before, should I travel afterwards? I mean, you have no idea for train. Or even two trains are just going to fly past and completely disrupt what you're talking about. And so it got me thinking, wow, do you know what? This is a really, really good topic. Like, published is better than perfect. And especially around the fear that so many people have. So I'm going to leave you with this. This is my process, what I like to do, and I do it once a month, and this is my content strategy. And this is what I would consider for you to do as a starting point. Pick one social media channel. Pick one social media channel and use that, whichever one you prefer, whichever one you like, and also whichever one your audience is on. Whoever you're marketing to, go to where they are. You know, if you're a foodie, go onto Pinterest, go onto Instagram. You know, if you're an event company, um, look at some of the other companies, uh, things that are out there like um, Foursquare or, you know, some other stuff that you can use. If you're, uh, if you're a music DJ, if you're anything like that, then SoundCloud is obviously going to be massive for you. iTunes. So go to wherever your market's going to be. You know, if you're like me and you're on Facebook, then I use Facebook. I don't use Twitter, I don't use LinkedIn, I don't use anything like that. I just use Facebook. And so you need to know where people are. The second thing is just get stuff out. Get stuff out every day. Just start doing it. Just get yourself into a habit. Even if you're doing a 30 day challenge, whatever it is, start to build up some content and just do it. Push yourself out of your comfort zone and get it out there. Also consider that when you're putting content out there, don't just flood the marketplace with tripe. It is so easy when you're putting content out there and it would be so easy for me right now to just start waffling on about stuff that no one really cares about. You need to put some context into why you're doing what you're doing. Don't just get on the camera and talk for no reason. Make sure you have an outcome in mind. See, my outcome in mind is that I'm getting you to consider different things around strategy. So I'm getting you, the whole purpose of this week is just to get you thinking about strategy. I want you to think about strategy in terms of your marketing, your content, your sales, your business, everything. Because here's the reality. When people come to me and say, I want a website, I, I never answer that question. That's never the question I answer. I always ask a question back. When people come to me and say, I need a website, I'm like, great, show me your balance sheet. Show me your business model. Show me that you're building a website for a business that's actually viable and that can withstand the next 6, 12, 24 months. Because otherwise, what the hell is the point of you building a website? Are you doing it for your ego? Great. You've got a hobby and you want an ego website? I'm not going to help you because I don't care. I'm not interested in you just building an ego so that you can just um, project to people. 
But if you add real value to people, if you're a real difference, like one of my clients, she's a mumpreneur. She works with mums who are, you know, building a business and who are trying to balance their, their work life, professional life um, to, to their home life. Um, specifically as single mums who are struggling to do all of that on their own. So I have a lot of time and a lot of respect for this lady and so yeah absolutely she's one of my clients because I can see what she's doing is adding massive, massive value. So consider what you're doing. You know, if you're just here because you just want to, uh, if someone comes to me and says, and this happened recently, someone said, I'm in multi-level marketing and I want to attract people into my product and I was like, good, enjoy. I have no interest. I don't want to work with them people. I don't want to promote some shitty product. Well, it's not even a shitty product, to be fair. He had a really, really good product. But at the same time, I'm not interested in that model. It's not my thing. You know, you've got to be happy to say at that point that you can walk away. You have to be able to walk away and say, do you know what? Some things just aren't for me. And so you've got to say that within your content as well. Sometimes you need context. You need to know that when you're putting your content out there, that there's context behind it, that you have an outcome and that you're doing it for the right reason. So this is what I do. Record a video. One of the most important things, the most powerful things, as I've already mentioned, is record a video because you can repurpose it. Now, if you were to sit down once a month, just once a month, that's all you need to do, and you were to write out four topics around one subject. So, for example, this week I'm doing strategy. So I could record four five minute videos around strategy, different areas of strategy. All you need to do is write down the outcome, maybe three bullet points for each video, and then spend five minutes just recording, and you don't have to do a Facebook Live, you can if you want, but you could just record this at any point, anywhere, just record a video for five minutes based on the outcome, like have the outcome in mind, and consider your target audience, who you're talking to, talk to them, and talk to them in a way that you are delivering the outcome, or you're helping them get to their outcome. Deliver the bullet points and do that. If you do four videos, all right, that's going to take you 20 minutes. All right, let's say you script each one and spend five minutes. So you're going to spend, let's say, 15 minutes on each video. Okay, five minutes to record it, five minutes to script it, um, and just another five minutes as a buffer. So you're talking about an hour, an hour a month. There's a train coming, by the way, just to let you know. It's a, it's a different. Wow, that was a really short one. Um, if you do a video. Okay, for 15 minutes, do four of them around four different areas. That's an hour that's taking you, one hour per month. Upload all four videos to Rev.com. And by the way, because you pay per minute, it will keep it succinct. So, <laughs> hey girl, hey Jane. Uh, it wasn't Thomas, by the way. There was no face on the front of that one. Um, once you've done that, so now you've recorded your video, you've got your video, you can upload that to YouTube, go onto Rev.com or transcribe it, get it transcribed, and now you've got a blog post. Upload the video with the, with the text into YouTube, link to your blog post, upload it as a blog post, put a retargeting pixel on that blog so you know people are interested in that kind of topic because they're clicking through. And also take social media shares, put it onto Facebook, take comments out of, um, out of take, take some uh, content or out of what you're doing in the video, take some still images, take some images that are relevant to it, put it on your social media channel, get some conversations going and schedule it. Use an app like I use CoSchedule. There's Hootsuite, CoSchedule, Buffer. There's loads of different things out there. Get that out there and start to put your content out and spend, I would send, I, I spend about four hours, I would say, on average. I, I, I schedule two, but the reality is I spend about four hours writing my content once a month. And I think about what do I want to focus on? If you've got an industry where there's a trending topic, where something's going on, um, piggyback on it. Use it. You know, if, if, if something's trending at the moment, then, then use that. Use it to your advantage. Um, anything around Trump or anything like that, you know, people use it on social media. It gets it gets the conversation going. So, if you're in politics and your whole business around politics, and you've got a debating committee who's about to have an event, and you, and Trump's in the press, then then use Trump's debating, you know, skills as a way to leverage people into what you're doing. You know, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to to consider how you can add value, how you can get your message out there, how you can market yourself, and just just deliver content. Just make sure you're out there, make sure you're delivering content, make sure that you're regular as well. One thing that I found which has had a massive, massive impact on what I'm doing is consistency. 12 o'clock every day. Like, look at what Rhett said at the beginning. My favourite time of the day. And Rhett, I love you for it, brother. Because there are people that watch this every day and, and I love you guys. I absolutely love you guys. It's the reason I'm doing this. It's the consistency. Of course people will tune in later. People will watch the replay. There are people at work. There are people who are busy. I get that. This isn't meant for everyone all the time. This is meant for people to come and go get and grab as and when they can and as a result it's why I'm trying to make sure that I'm limiting it and it's not as long as like 30 minutes I really want to make these like 15 minutes so I'm not just waffling all day 
but hopefully you get it. Hopefully it makes sense. So I'm going to go and jump on my train. Have an amazing day. If you've got any questions around any type of strategy, just ping me a message. Go back through the other videos. I'll get everything uploaded today into YouTube. So there'll be the playlist. You can go back. Monday morning, 12 o'clock, we're going to jump straight into strategy uh, about system, not system, sorry, about uh, sales funnels. We're going to be talking about customer journeys. We're going to be talking about opt-ins, sales funnels, lead magnets, tripwires, uh, different wording, why I don't call it tripwire because I don't like that word, you know, initial product offers. Um, and we're going to go through all of that process. So... Make sure you tune in on Monday. It's going to be a good day. Apart from that, I'm going to look at the comments quickly. Guys, thank you so much for everything you've written. Uh, Gal, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. See, this is what you're doing. Um, you've been doing this for the, the empath stuff, and that's fantastic because there will be somebody who at some point will need that. Now, Gal, as an example, what you can do for your empath stuff is you can, you can consider different types of content. So looking at your target audience uh, for, for the empath stuff, what are your target audience on uh, an average day? What are they going to be feeling? Because obviously, you know, empathetic people, they, they, they're emotional beings, they're very feely people. Sometimes they're in really good spirits, sometimes they're in bad spirits. You know, sometimes they're having a good day, sometimes they're having a wobble. So sometimes people are feeling quite emotional and they may need a different, uh, a different style video to pick them up compared to when they're on top of the world and they just need a video to ensure that they're not overbearing on other people. Because sometimes, you know, and I can be quite empathetic at times, um, when I'm energetic, when I'm happy, I, I, I need to have my sensory acuity about me. I need to make sure that I'm aware that when I'm in a conversation with someone, I'm not like, hello, how are you? Because it could be quite easy for me to do that. Sometimes I need to be like, hi, how are you? And so that could be two completely different types of video that you record, two completely different types of content. So you need to understand who are you targeting, what is your tone of your voice? What is your emotion? Where, where are you? What space are you holding when you record your videos and when you do your content? Um, I've been asking lots of questions, mostly finding sensitive a pain, find sensitivity a pain in the ass. Do you know what? This is what I was talking about recently. This is, um, you know, the, the, the question that I'm talking about at the moment and one of the things I'm going through, um, not so much in the business side of things, but in a different side of things, is um, <clears throat> archetypes. I'm really interested in archetypes at the moment um, and in divine masculine, divine feminine. Um, more interestingly, the question I'm asking myself is why, why do I often become a bitch? That's the question. And the reason is because where I was, and, and this is really interesting because this has actually taught me a lot. I know this is going off business now, but the reason I was asking that question is because I wanted to understand it. I wanted to dive deep into it. And then the question actually turned into how can I control my masculine and feminine energy better? So it's a better question that I started to answer. Once I, once I dove down into the why and I understood it, then I asked a more empowering question in how can I control my masculine and feminine energy? And the, the way to do that is to, is to have a better understanding. So I've been looking into the archetypes. I've been looking into the, uh, the different modalities between um, masculine and feminine and into why I was doing that, you know, because I was struggling financially um, and because Jamie had stepped into her masculine role to control the relationship, I stepped into my feminine and we had more of an adult-child relationship, rather, uh, sorry, a parent-child rather than an adult-adult. So, like, when I consider and look into that sort of thing, that's been really, really powerful for me. So, Gal, in terms of what you're doing, I mean, you may look at why is someone where they are? Why is a man in their feminine? What's causing that? What are the problems? What's the pain? What's, having that? what's, what's ha making it happen? Okay, what's the solution? Because now I've just given you a complete breakdown as to why I am where I am. You can reverse engineer that and create a product because if you now told me that you've got a product that would describe, if you had 12 videos talking about each of the different archetypes, I'd buy that all day long because I'm interested in that right now. And so if you did that as like a loss leader for like 20, 20 pounds on Facebook as a, here's a mini course that goes through the archetypes, a video on each, I'm there, I bought it already. Now you can start to upsell me and nurture me on the different archetypes and if you're doing an event in London around archetypes, guess what, I'm there. So it's, it's not that people don't want to buy, it's just people don't want to buy what you're selling. So you need to find out what people are interested in, you need to understand your target audience and you need to make sure your content is relevant to them and it's contextual to, as to where they are on their journey. No doesn't mean no, not ever. No means not now. So if someone's not buying from you, you're just not getting the right content in the right context in front of them. So just something to consider, that's all. I hope that helps. I wanted to use that as a quick example. Take that for whatever industry you're working in. Take that for whatever matters to you. But have an amazing day, and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. I'll speak to you Monday. Bye.